All right, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Bishop Willie Wilson, uh, part of Prodigy Elect. I am actually the spiritual uh, chairperson for the uh, group of young men, and we're just very blessed to come to you tonight uh, with another interview of another great writer of a very, very good book. Uh, and we just thank God so much for just having the opportunity to be here with uh, Bishop Kevin Rand. How you doing, Bishop? I'm very good, Bishop. Gl glad to be here. Uh, so excited about what's going on and what's happening here. Well, I tell you what, I am too, because ever since I saw the, this book, I, it just impressed me so much. Just the very name of the book impressed me. Yeah. And you know, and I know I'm not a whole lot to be impressed, but I am something to be impressed. <laughs> and you know, and so we looked at the book and we discovered that uh, within ourselves that it is a great opportunity to touch the hearts and the minds of people. And it may even stop some of what we call the violence that's going on in the world today, because I believe when a person uh, is involved in trying to figure out something. They ain't got time to be causing no problem. <laughs> That's right. Amen. That's so, right. That is so, right. But uh, first thing we're going to ask you to do, Bishop, is you can, uh, you know, just tell us where you pastor. You know, you, you can even tell us your wife and, and uh, her name and all that. All right. Well, I'm Bishop Kelvin Ramsey. Uh, I pastor at the Spirit of Excellence Church in Oxford, Mississippi. I've uh, been there for uh, this year will be 21 years. Okay. Uh, so we, Lord has blessed us. We just recently paid the church off and got 19 acres of land that God has blessed us with. Right. So we're doing very well. Uh, my wife of almost 34 years is Deborah Elaine Ramsey, yeah. and uh, we have a son, uh, Kelvin the second, and uh, we're doing real well. Bishop. Right. Well, good, good, good. That's that's wonderful. Um, I, I want to just talk about you know, when you talk about figuring life out. Where did you get that title for this book? Well, interestingly enough, it w it came from my wife. Okay. Uh, she was going to school at a, um, and it was, it was later years, you know, because she got she went back to school at about 45, 46, somewhere in there. And so okay. she came home from school one day and uh, she walked in the room. She said, Kelvin, uh, this math is really getting to me. She said, I'm just, I'm really trying to figure it out. And as uh, soon as she said that, it hit my spirit. Right. That's what's wrong with people. They're trying to figure life out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's exactly where that, that title comes from. Right. And from there, the Lord just expanded the whole book, and uh, it came to be. Came, all right. Well, i tell you what, man. Again, I say that it's, it's great, man. It's a great book. Uh, and I want to highlight one more thing about it. Beneath the title, we got Living Life How God Intended to, but to Be Lived. Can you just elaborate on that just for a little bit? Yes. Uh, you know... I, I wrote the book. I hope I was hoping that the uh, title would just catch people's eye, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the, the the title and the cover, most people when they see it, they say, "Wow, figuring life out." And so then, you know, the bottom line of life is He created us. Right. So if you're gonna have a, a, a successful life, God's got to be somewhere in the mix. Right. So uh, that's how I came up uh, with the subtitle, "Living the Life God Intended." Okay. Since he gave us life, surely he knows why we have life. And uh, if you can figure that part out, then that, that's half the battle. Right, right. Yeah. But I tell you what, it, 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 you know, it, was, it was so interesting to me until it caused me to go back and start studying and looking a little bit deeper. Why? Because I started looking at, at different people around me who are always asked the question, man, uh, how you get, how you deal with this issue? Life is so hard, man. How you figure this thing out? And, uh, you know, so I'm like, okay, figuring out, figuring out, figuring out. I had no answers for them at that particular time, but once I started reading your book, then I started understanding that that was a possibility that a man could figure out how to live this life yes, sir. in a better way. Yes, sir. So, um, uh, my, 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 my nephew, I called him because he's an expert in math. Okay. So I called him. I said, uh, "How do you figure problems out? You know, the x equals y, z squared, and all of this." So he said, "There's two ways you can do it, Uncle." He said, "You could uh, put numbers in the x and the y and the you know z and try to figure it out that way by plugging numbers in, or you can use the the the, the um, x equals c. Uh, what's that? C c squared. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a formula." Okay. That he said, if you ever get the formula down, he said, you never have to plug in numbers again. Wow. He said, the formula will work for every problem. And so it's just a matter of figuring out the formula to figure out the problem. Instead of plugging numbers in, you got the formula. And what people are doing in life, they're plugging things in, 
trying to figure out how, if this is going to work, will that work? Will alcohol work? Will drugs work? Well, if you get the formula, God works. Right. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it no more. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. And you know what? We, I guess we're probably not going to expose that formula tonight because <laughs> we want people to become interested enough that they would actually purchase this book. And once they purchase the book, they can study the book. But we also want to give them an opportunity to come to a place where they can ask you, uh, Bishop Randall, what did you mean with this and what did this happen? You no, know, we want want to get that. Then, then you know, by going in that direction, mm -hmm. maybe the formula will come to them. Or else, by that time, you might be able to expose them. And say, okay, here's the formula for living this life out. Because we, we, you know, we, we understand that there was a point where Jesus said. Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. He said, but I've come that you may have life and have more abundantly. Exactly. And everybody has been trying to get their abundance of life ever since. Mm -hmm. If they'd have understood what that was, they would get it. But I think that there's a lot of ignorance as to what that, what, what, what the abundance of life really is. It is. You know. It is. <laughs> so, uh, let's let's uh, move on a little forward because, and I want, I want to hear this because, it is it, to me it was touching when you wrote the forward. That was supposed to be written by who? That was supposed to be written by my daughter, okay, uh, Kiara, uh, whom uh, she passed in August of 2018. Right. Uh, suddenly she had a blood clot and uh, the Lord took her home. Okay. But uh, I had uh, told her that I want her to write the forward. And she was so excited because anybody that knew my daughter knew she was brilliant. Right. And writing was her forte. Okay. Uh, when she passed it, really, I said, Lord, I, she was supposed to do this, and the Lord told me she can still do it. Okay. Because she had written so many blogs. And I just took one of her blogs and plugged it in as the full word. Right. And uh, when, you, when you read that, if you read that, you'll understand just how, how awesome she was. Right. And then I have uh, two other of her blogs in the back of the book. Okay. And then I want to encourage everyone to purchase the book because I want you to read those. Uh, because it talks about pieces. Yes. It talked about yes. uh, giving God nine, you. Uh, you know, it, it talked about those things. So we want you to get it and read those because they could be very exciting uh, and probably very inspirational in helping a person even desire a motive, uh, uh, a desire, uh, 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 an idea, or desire a way to figure this thing out. Yeah, you know? that, that, that piece she wrote, Bishop, really dealt with people who aren't perfect. Right. Because she always was saying, you know, I'm not perfect, and my heart has been broken. But she said, but I've given God the broken pieces of my heart, and he mended it. Right. So it's really talking to people who feel like, well, maybe I ain't worthy. Maybe, you know, this thing ain't going to ever work out. But she figured it out. And that was great, man. Yeah, it was. It was, it was awesome. And I know yeah. that you had to believe that deep in your heart in order to accept the fact. Because you and Q were real close. Oh, very no close. Doubt, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. You were really close. Yes. And, uh, yes. Uh, and, I, and I can't even imagine what you went through or how it felt when uh, that happened. On very that devastating. Morning. You yeah. know, you go to sleep and then you wake up and life changes like that. In yeah. fact, uh, I got a chapter in here that we'll talk about maybe later about how do you handle... Um, the sudden events that happen in your right. life, sudden right. things, things that you're not expecting, how to handle the unexpected. And he didn't give me that until after she passed. Okay. So that wasn't a part of the original book, but when she passed, uh, I was able to write it. Put it in there. Because mm -hmm. we, we're going to, you know, we, we would probably get to that. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure we will. But uh, the next <coughs> uh, thing that I want to bring is, is you, 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 there's a part you talk about what, what is life. I think that's the very first chapter to my what is like. Yeah. Uh, could you elaborate on that just just a little bit? Well, I thought that would be a good way to start because you don't know how to figure life out if you don't know what life is. Right. So you know, and uh, I started the book out with a lot a lot of life is questions. Okay. You know, life is this, life is that, um, and I gave about six or seven examples of the life is questions. Then I gave the one that I think is the most misunderstood the most dangerous of them all and that is life is what you make it okay and uh that's what most people live by life is what you make it life is how you figure it out how you uh, perceive it but uh in my in my opinion uh especially in my own life i tried to make my own life and i made a mess right right you know i tried to do my own thing i tried to make my own decision for years 
and uh, just wasn't adding up. Everything was yeah, like, coming yeah. up to zero, right, right. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> so, so I, that's that's how I began that chapter. Right, because yeah. I I was just reading it and where it talk about life is like a piano, you know, life is like a bar of soap, uh -huh. life is like Slippery. a mountain, life is like a photograph, photograph, and those types of things, and 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 uh, and we we would just encourage the buyers to get that and read it. Uh, but but the, the chapter that you talked about is you know about uh, how things affect you instantly. I think is is how events affect your life. Yeah, but well, that actually wasn't the chapter. The, the other chapter is near the end of the book. This book came before the event happened with Key. Okay. But uh, it's 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 probably in my opinion one of the most powerful chapters in the book. Okay. We talk. It talks about how events affect your life. Okay. And I had my wife uh, write five fictionist stories about people who have gone through rape, molestation, uh, things of this nature. And then uh, how does that affect your life? Because when those things happen, uh, you see life from a diff through a different lens. Like uh, many people have committed suicide because of events right. and things that have happened. They don't know how to handle it. They don't know who, where to go. You know, they go to counselors, that don't work. And so events are very, very uh, influential and uh, how you figure life out. Okay, okay. Man, I tell you what, um, now we, we get, we're going on because we get into a place where uh, we talk about the, the master key to figuring life out. Yeah. Uh, now what is that master key? Well, I, I, I love that, that chapter also because uh, if you get a master key, anybody that knows anything about a master key, know that a master key can unlock any door. Right. Uh, if, you, if you're a hotel manager, and uh, some people can have keys to the room. Right. But the manager got the key to all rooms. Right, right. He, he holds the master key. So uh, I entitled that the master key of life because the, the bottom line is at some point, uh, you're going to have to put God in the mix. And, uh, and in my opinion, uh, God is the master key to life. He, okay. he is the one that made you. He is the one that can set it straight. He's the one that can tell you how to live it to, to its fullest. And uh, if you try him, you understand what I'm talking about. Hey, you know, I, I'm 64 now. I, I got saved when I was 12, okay. born again when I was 12. And of course I had to learn. I had to learn. I, I, I still try to do things my way. But the older I got, the more I figured out, hey, I can't do this without God. Wow. So, you know, he's the master key. <laughs> he's the master key. <laughs> and I know, uh, I, you know, I know because I believe the same thing, man. And I, I want to say this to the audience, those who will hear this, man. Ever since, I, ever since I picked up this book seriously, I've been looking at life from a different perspective. Wow. And it has enabled me to start respecting and loving and caring more about people than I ever did before. So I feel like that's a way of figuring life out yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Let me add something too, Bishop, to that, uh, how events affect your life. Okay. Because uh, what happens is people go through things, and we tend to judge people not knowing the stories. Right. You know, uh, homosexual, a lesbian, why are they like that? You know, we tend to, to judge them and call them different, you know, different names and all that. But these are people who have went through an event. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get to know people's story, how can, how how dare you judge people? Right. You know, I, I always try to get to know people, know their stories, and then try to help them to understand that story and how you can get over that. That's our job, not to judge them. Right. And uh, that that's that 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 bothers me somewhat <laughs> that people would want to judge others when we all got a past. Right. All of us. And, all and of they us. all pretty. <laughs> 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 it ain't all pretty. Well, I want to get to, I, I think, uh, and I'm going to probably allow you to end on this one is, is that what do you do when things just happen? No expectation, they just happen. Well, the unexpected is maybe the most devastating thing to try to figure out because you're not expecting it. Uh, when, I, when I wrote that chapter, I started off by saying, uh, we know how to handle the unexpected good. Mm. Uh, in other words, you get a check in the mail unexpectedly, you know how to handle that. You get happy about it. You get a promotion on the job, you know, you wouldn't expect it. You get happy about it. That's a good unexpected. But what happens when that negative unexpected happens? 
like in my case, when, when your daughter wakes up one morning and can't breathe, and an hour and a half later she's gone. Right. And with no clue, with no idea. So here's the thing, you know, I knew God, but it hit my humanity, it hit my flesh. And I was just saying, you know, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to preach no more. I don't want to pray no more. Uh, you come and took my daughter. I prayed for other people's daughters and they've gotten healed and I've done this for other people. And now you take my daughter and I'm trying to figure it out in my own mind how to, right. you know, because it's hitting my flesh. But I never will forget, Bishop, what the Lord told me and it brought me out of it. He said, Kelvin, you're trying to understand me. He said, and you can't understand me. What you have to do is trust me. Okay. Wow. And so he, he gave me a formula. He said, you go from understanding to trust to peace. Wow. He said, you, you'll never get peace while you're trying to understand me. But if you can ever get to the point where you trust me, you don't have to understand me. <laughs> <laughs> and you end up in peace. Right. And it's the peace that passes all understanding. And that's how I got there. It was a process. And I can imagine, man. It was I a process, imagine. and it was a hard one. Yes, yeah, sir, because I tell you, uh, it just, that was that was devastating uh, to all that even knew you. Yeah. You know, and so it was very, and I guess we all needed that for him. Yeah. You know, we all needed that at that particular time because we needed to understand. Uh, we couldn't understand God, but we had to trust him. Yeah. You know, in that situation, you know, we all praying for you and hoping that things would work out well. And God was doing what he was going to do anyway. Because I would imagine that that helped you in trying to figure it, it, it out. It did. It did. You know, and it's, what, I, what I found out is that it's a process. You, you, know, you know, when things hit suddenly, you have to process it. Mm -hmm. you, you don't understand it right away. Give it some time. You know, one thing about us, we're, we're strong in the Lord. Like you, you, you lost your mother. And you was very close to your mother. Right. And uh, you had to process that. Right. You didn't yeah. want to hear nobody saying, oh, I'm sorry. I, you know, she in a better place. You don't want to hear none of that. None of that. I did. You know, you no. have to process it first so you can come to grips with it. Right. And then, <laughs> like me, the Lord let me complain and, and, and cry for a while. Then he said, I got you. <laughs> I understand more than you think I do. So he gave me space to, you know, vent and get all that out. But at the end of the day. I come up with the formula. He's good. All right. He's good all the time. <laughs> right. well, for all of those of you who are listening, and those of you who actually will see this video, this is the book that we're talking about, Figuring Life Out, written by Bishop Kelvin Ramsey, uh, former NBA star, uh, player, and, and, and he came here uh, because God called him into a different arena of life, and he's been here, and he had a few struggles when he first got here, but you wouldn't know it now uh, because uh, God blessed him. So this is the book called Figuring Life Out, Living a God Life That God Intended For You. Uh, so I want you to uh, keep a date uh, in your mind. That's uh, uh, November 12th. Uh, he will be at our church, New Life Community Church, and he's going to be signing and uh, autographing or whatever you want to call it. And then you'll have the opportunity to ask him questions concerning this. So we want you to get ready, uh, prepare it. You'll be hearing about it. You'll be seeing things that that will reflect that, and it's going to be it's going to be great because I believe that this book right here is the answer to a lot of the problems that we have right here in Tupelo, Mississippi, and in many surrounding areas. So we expect for this to move on and go to places that we haven't been yet. And All Bishop, right? I tell you, if, if they come, whoever comes, I'm, I'm gonna share with you my MBA story. Because okay. uh, a lot of people don't understand the MBA part of it. Right. You know, uh, you know, I played against Julius Irvin, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and uh, I was a good player. I could right. play. And I was one vote from Rookie of the Year, so I, I could play the game. But uh, after six years, the Lord said, I want you to quit. I was in the prime. That's part of figuring life out. Right. Do you want to be your? Do you want to do your will? Do God's will. So I'm going to share uh, about that uh, if you come. All right. All right. <laughs> so hey, we were grateful. We we're very grateful to uh, have you here tonight. My pleasure. Uh, to to uh, uh, share with us what you shared with us about mm -hmm. your book, and uh, our prayer is is that all of the people who will watch this video will become concerned about life enough to want to figure it out. Yes. And then do yes. what they need to do to start the process of figuring. You know, like most folks say, well, get your job. You know, you know I know people got great jobs, man, yes. making great money. But they are millionaires. Yeah. millionaires. Millionaires. And, and, and see, we, we, we're trying to get people to learn how to prevent that thing. 
and folk will tell you, ain't nothing you can do about that, but it is something. It is something about. you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't have to be broke to do it. <laughs> you don't have to be poor to do it. You can be rich and still do it. All right, all right. Well, Mr. appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it. My, my pleasure. Uh, you coming and sharing this with us tonight, and we're going to get that aired within another uh, week or so, uh, and people will get a chance to watch it. But we're still working on, on, on promoting this book. We want to promote it. We want everybody in the world man i do to read this book yeah yeah I do. yeah it's not a long read and, and no. sometimes that's good because most people won't finish a long, right, <laughs> a long right, read right. but uh it's it's big wording and uh so but it's, it's power i say it's, it's, it's a million dollars worth of information in right this book. it is it's very powerful it really is it's very powerful all right well thank you sir and we're going to conclude right now and again, we want to say thank you. If you have the last words you want to say before we go, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the end of the book, I just, I, I mentioned the last chapter, the choice is yours. Okay. You know, and, and, and you have to make the choice of how you want to, you know, run your life. What 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 uh, view, vantage point or viewpoint would you live your life from? Everybody lives their life from some kind of viewpoint. Right. You know, whether it's philosophical. Phil topical or spiritual or whatever you're living from some kind of viewpoint right uh, we're just trying to get you to see that in our opinion that God is the one who could really uh, straighten out your life all right and so I'm looking forward to it I'm me too me it. too man well thank you so much again and we're gonna end tonight uh, with that note and we thank all of y'all for tuning in and watching it uh, give us a call maybe we need to give a phone call a, a number uh, if anybody want to call, you want to give a number? Yeah, you can call me. Uh, if you want to even want to start ordering the book, you can call me because I self-published the book. So I'm, I'm the one that's really distributing it. So if you'd like a copy, you can either go to my Facebook page, Kelvin Ranzi, K-E-L-V-I-N-R-A-N, as in Nancy, S-E-Y. Go to my Facebook page. You can uh, tell me you want a book that way. Or you could call 662-213-7170. And uh, we'll make sure that we'll get this book to you. All right. All right. Well, thank you, sir.